Hi guys, it is an exciting Thursday night at the laundromat from hell here, and uh, <laughs> good God, as another season begins at Bugs in a Jar Farm, Airbnb, and Hip Camp, and uh, I'm here to uh, Get ready to start renting out the tiny house. Time to become a sheet washer. So I'm down here at the local small town laundromat burning up fossil fuels in the uh, washer and the dryer. I am fully admitting I'm going to use an electric washing machine and an electric dryer to wash and dry my sheets. Uh, so, uh, I can make a million dollars being an Airbnb host. I need to get my super host status back. Anyway, so in an effort to become a super host on Airbnb, this is your old, uh, your old doomer. Down at the local laundromat, burning fossil fuels here on this lovely, it is a Thursday evening, May 26, 2022, and Memorial Day weekend beginning tomorrow. So, uh, anyway, I might as well do my, uh, my chronicle of the collapse uh, while I'm here. This, this one here says it all. These five Arizona cities are among the fastest growing in the U.S., here is what to know. What to know about the fact that five of the ten fastest growing cities in the country are in Arizona, and I guess the first and the second one are in Texas, and probably the others are in Florida. The fact that, that in the year 2022 that uh, seven at least uh, of the fastest growing cities in this country are in Arizona and Texas is all you need to know about, you, you, you know, that the bottomless well of clueless morons. Anyway, that title says it all. So we're going to go over here to the good old Christian Science Monitor. Have I ever had the Christian Science Monitor uh, on Collapse Chronicles? So, uh, again, this is going to a little bit push the envelope here on uh, here at CC. Uh, not, I don't want to slip into some other uh, more dark regions of the Doomosphere, but this war on Doomers that I've mentioned and I've heard other Doomers mention, the war on Doomers, have you noticed, is completely, it, it is gone berserk as uh, Doomers. It, it's, it's our fault, okay? Doomers are the bad guys, and uh, th this one is so jaw-dropping. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what I could add to this uh, about this fake news, this misinformation, this disinformation being blathered across uh, Yahoo News, the mainstream media right here, the Christian Science Monitor as the uh, absolute outlandish assaults against doomers uh, reaches a new level today. How climate change doomerism fuels violent extremism. There you go. Doomers are violent extremists. I guess we're all a bunch of Ted Kaczynski's. If you are a Doomer, you're Ted Kaczynski, you are, of course, you're a eugenicist. I, I haven't even read this, guys. L l let me try to predict what we're going to read in here. Doomers are, we're, of course, we're racist. Let's see, if you're, if you're a white Doomer, 
you're a racist and probably a eugenicist. Uh, and, and I guess you're a terrorist. Um, anyway, take it away. Christian Science Monitor. In October 2019, an environmental researcher named Jenny Roland Shea co-wrote a report for the left-leaning <coughs> Center for American Progress about the rapid loss of American wildlife and natural areas. In it, she included a statistic that the United States was losing a football field size swath of nature every 30 seconds. Uh, soon, she recalls, she started seeing that fact and her report cited in a variety of blog posts and opinion articles and uh, I, I vaguely recognize that name. For all I know, I covered that report. I don't think so, but if I had seen the story, I would have. <coughs> okay, her report would have been cited right here on Collapse Chronicles. But these pieces of writing took a very different tone. Quote, they were always twisting that statistic to support some rhetoric that we, you know, the little lefties she was writing for, certainly were not aiming to support, such as criticizing immigrants and people of color saying they were responsible for environmental damage, says Ms. Roland She. Um, when she and her colleagues started researching the post, they found a landscape, a landscape of environmental rhetoric and organizations with nativist and even fascist leaning underpinnings. Although they were taken aback at first, Ms. Roland Shea recalls, they learned from colleagues that what they were seeing was far from unique. Yes, over the past few years, mainstream environmentalists and climate activists, activists have watched with alarm as a new brand of right-wing, of right-wing eco-consciousness. Right, right there, we have a contradiction in terms right-wing eco-consciousness, there you go, has started to gain traction in the U.S. and Western Europe. On its extreme edge, proponents have explicitly embraced the label of eco-fascism. Mm -hmm. Talking about... Uh, now, I do know some people down here in the Doomosphere who's we don't have to mention any names, who are, uh, who refer to themselves proudly and unrepentantly as eco-fascists and eco-Nazis. I actually know some of these self-identified uh, eco-Nazis very well, personally. I, I know some of these self-proclaimed eco-Nazis, and let me tell you, they are as far away from right-wing uh, crackpots as they are far away from mainstream environmentalists. Okay? The eco-Nazi, the way I understand the definition of eco-fascist or eco-Nazi, it, it is an ironic joke. It has nothing to do, I guess, with right wing or left wing. Uh, it understands uh, an eco Nazi or an eco fascist is someone who understands that the problem on this planet is humans. There is one solution to the problem of humans, and that is the final solution 
of getting rid of humans. You can do this by two ways. You can kill humans like some of these, you know, these mass murderers and, uh, and, 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 and those kind of guys, the, the, those kind of crackpot idiots. Uh, or you can do it you can increase the death rate or you can decrease the birth rate. Okay. And the eco-Nazis I know who understand that the only final solution to the problem, which is too many people on the planet, is to get rid of, the, to bring down the population by lowering the birth rate, preferably to zero, zero, zero. I do not, I personally do not know one single human being, uh, any self-proclaimed eco-fascist or eco-Nazi that supports mass shootings. Uh, the, the very notion is patently absurd. Uh, I have never met uh, an eco-fascist or an eco-Nazi supporting killing a bunch of people. So whether it be a mass shooting or, or whether it be a war or whatever. Okay. Uh, the, 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 this, this whole thing to demonize uh, what this is, is demonizing people uh, talking about overpopulation. If you talk about overpopulation, you're a Nazi uh, and a, a eugenicist and all the rest. It's crap, okay? C complete crap. This is a way to vilify and denigrate anybody with the balls uh, who can handle the truth with a capital T. Well, what the problem is on this planet is too many people, and, and that until we address the overpopulation issue, all of this other crap, all of it's crap. Everything takes a back seat to it. All right. But anyway, let's listen to the, this unadulterated horseshit coming uh, out of uh, the Christian Science Monitor. Um, okay. On its extreme edge, proponents have explicitly embraced the label of eco-fascism. The alleged perpetrator of this month's mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, claimed this identity, as did those in the 2019 El Paso, Texas, and Christchurch, New Zealand massacres. Each blamed migrants and people of color in general for denigrating nature and claimed that killing to lower population numbers was helpful for the environment, a clear throwback, scholars say, to Nazi rhetoric. Once again, I don't know if I really investigated uh, the, those claims, the, whether those people call themselves uh, e e eco-fascists. They're nut jobs. Okay? Uh, I, I do not. I, I have been down here in the Doomosphere and pretty thick down in it. Uh, for 14 years, I have never, ever, one time in my life met a fellow Doomer, a fellow Collapsitarian, or anyone calling themselves an eco-Nazi or an eco-fascist who would, uh, who, who would say that mass killings is, is a way to uh, is is a, a way to solve the overpopulation problem, okay? But by, by trying to take these nut jobs, these mentally ill whack jobs, and, and, and suggest on any level 
that that if you are a doomer and you understand that population is the reason for uh, the climate for climate change and everything else uh, you know guys is anybody falling for this bullshit and the thing about it is they probably are uh, there, there's probably more people uh, thinking if they find out you're a doomer uh, th th that you're going to put a bullet. You know what I'm saying. Uh, th th this is unadulterated horseshit. Okay. But as disturbing as those cases are, some climate advocates say that even more worrisome, even more worrisome, than uh, people committing massacres, I guess. Even more worrisome is the way ecofascism's underlying concept, ecofascism's underlying concept, the violent defense of a romantic and racially white image of, quote, nature is seeping into the mainstream. This is particularly true, they, they say, these climate advocates say, as fewer people argue over whether climate change exists and more debate whether humans can do anything about it. And it is caused soul-searching for many environmental activists who have long worked to convey the seriousness of the climate crisis and who now find themselves needing to advocate against despair. Yes. Okay. This is Betsy Hartman, professor emeritus of development studies at Hampshire College and the author of The American Syndrome, Apocalypse, War, and Our Call to Greatness, Take it away, Betsy Hartman. Quote, Many have used doomsday narratives thinking that they were useful to scare people into action. I don't want to diminish the urgency of these environmental issues, but to put it in this apocalyptical mode encourages people to suspend their basic ethical frameworks. If it's an apocalypse coming, anything is possible, and it is easier for all kinds of racialized stereotypes come up. Yes. Okay, w w one more time. I guess I can only speak for myself but I, but but as far as I know, once again, uh, I've been down here speaking uh, uh, about collapse and the apocalypse going on, you know, in various forms uh, for 13 years. Uh, I have never one time intended by anything I have ever said in my entire career as a doomer to scare people into action. I am going, in my mind, I'm going down the list of, uh, you know, the usual suspects down here in the doomosphere uh, across all stripes. I cannot think of one single doomer that I know anywhere that I personally know trying to scare people into action. My, I guess, what do you call it, my subterfuge, uh, my purpose here is to, it, it, it's just, well, it, it's twofold. It, it's just like uh, I just think, you know, the collapse of a planet, uh, the biggest single story in the history of humanity, bar none, is just an interesting subject. Okay, 
uh, the, the obliteration of all life off of this planet because of humans, and which would, uh, you know, obviously include humans. I think it's an interesting subject, but I, you know, I uh, frame all of this apocalyptic stuff that I talk about to, you know, once people understand that you are doomed that you need to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Once you understand uh, the truth with a capital T and the knowledge with a capital K, your only question is how do you comport yourself for the rest of your life uh, getting out there and enjoying it while you still can, uh, knowing that this entire house of cards could come down any day on top of your head. All right. What else? Um, okay, continuing with Dr. Hartman. Quote, There may be climate factors involved in people's decisions to migrate but usually decisions to migrate are much more complex. I think we have to be wary about the way climate and migration have been linked in national security circles and even in progressive environmental circles. It often serves as yet another reason to beef up our borders. Yes, it's all about them the little brown people coming over our borders. Meg Rutan Walker, a climate activist based near Toronto, saw a similar kind of extreme despair as she worked to help local municipalities embrace climate action plans and lower emissions. She says that in public meetings and rallies, she would regularly encounter opposition not from climate change deniers, but from those who said the world was simply doomed. The best approach to global warming, these opponents argued, was to tighten borders, reject immigrants, and prepare individually for civilization's collapse. Yes, says... Ms. Rutan Walker, climate change scares me, but this, this is terrifying. It's what happens when people in the developed world say it's too late to do anything. Doomerism gives people the permission to do anything they want to survive. Yes, close quote. Indeed, despair is a key link between a growing global ultra-right movement and a fringe eco-fascist environmentalism, says Jeff Sparrow, an Australian writer who published the book Fascist Among Us about the Christchurch New Zealand massacre. Quote, Fascism is a movement of despair. It's the world is falling apart. We don't feel we can make it better in any way. So let's unleash violence and find redemption. Nothing good comes out of despair. Okay. Once again, have I personally ever met a doomer. Let's see, uh, I have about 5,000 uh, subs on this channel. Uh, I have personally met two or three hundred uh, doomers. I have, I don't know, just uh, right, right here in, in upstate New York, uh, there's about 12 or 15 of us living within a couple of hours of me. I have never met 
one single doomer, never once saying, let's unleash violence and find redemption. Back to Dr. Hartman, yet for decades, says Dr. Hartman, environmental rhetoric has leaned toward apocalyptic warnings. These have been about everything from food shortages to water running out to the dire effects of overpopulation, she says. Well, at least the Christian Science Monitor has the balls to even say the O word, to even uh, breathe it, which of course is so they can attack it. That last point, that last point, meaning the dire effects of overpopulation, has been particularly problematic, she says. In 1968, a best-selling book by Stanford professor Paul Ehrlich, you know Paul Ehrlich, he was the very first person I ever interviewed on on Collapse Corners. You know, you know Paul Ehrlich. He's that ultra right wing Nazi uh, advocating mass shootings uh, and unleashing violence. Yes, uh, Paul Ehrlich. There, there you go. Uh, there, there is a real. Uh, th there is a real terrorist, Paul Ehrlich. Yes. A best-selling book by Paul Ehrlich, The Population Bomb, predicted that a growing number of humans would lead to everything from global famine to world war. It helped usher in years of environmental ideology focused on the alleged problem. The alleged problem of, quote, too many people, close quote, the alleged problem of too many people, wow, but as Dr. Hartman and other scholars have pointed out that too many was rarely conceptualized as white anglo Saxons. Indeed, the whole concept of overpopulation had roots, here we go, I knew it had to show up, in the early 20th century eugenics movement, which advocated building a superior human race through selective breeding, an approach that was deeply racist. Okay. One more time, and, and uh, again, uh, I recall in my interview with Paul Ehrlich and many other interviews, Paul Ehrlich has made it completely clear for the record it would have been very easy for this reporter to find Paul Ehrlich claiming the most overpopulated country hands down uh, on this planet is not India, it is not Nigeria, it is the United States of America. Make no mistake about this, he got no argument from me. The United States of America is the number one most overpopulated country on this planet. I agree with the man 100%. Okay, in recent years, most mainstream environment, most mainstream environmental organizations have backed away from and even apologized for their focus on overpopulation during the 1960s and 1970s, and for the record, this is why I am not a mainstream environmentalist. If anybody has ever heard one word come out of my mouth and mistaken me for a 
mainstream environmentalist, uh, obviously we have had a failure to communicate. Okay? I am not a mainstream environmentalist. I am a doomer. Okay, but the rhetoric, the rhetoric about, you know, the myth of overpopulation still comes up regularly in conversations about climate, says Jacqueline Gill, a paleoecologist at the University of Maine. This is despite clear research that shows fossil fuel use in wealthier, whiter countries has had a far greater climate impact than the number of people in any high birth rate nation. Quote, quoting Dr. Gill, it's really hard to get people to accept that consumption is the problem, not how many people there are. And that when we talk about overpopulation, there is a dog whistle there that a lot of people don't even realize that they're blowing. Yes, the old dog whistle. You know, the, the old uh, consumption versus uh, overpopulation. Let's get back to Paul Ehrlich, the IPAT equation. All right impacts, meaning environmental impacts, are a product of population, affluence, and technology. The more people you have on the planet, their level of affluence, meaning their ability to buy more of this planet-eating crap, and don't forget the T that a lot of people do, technology that we have to take down the planet. Okay, it is, it is not an either or, it is a both and. My response to people in this debate, a person who was never born has a consumption rate of zero. There is one way, one way, to have an ecological carbon footprint of zero, 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 that is to never have been born. The counterpoint to all of this, many climate advocates say, is a sort of gritty optimism. I love that term, gritty optimism. Uh -huh. A sort of gritty optimism that requires a shift from the alarm that is often characterized the warnings about global warming, said Ms. Rutan Walker. The world is changing so quickly, and the climate is changing so quickly. We're really behind in how we're communicating. Yes, she and others say that instead of doom and societal collapse, People need to learn that concerted action can make a difference and that many steps are happening to counteract climate-related damage and also how they can work with others in what she calls radical solidarity. I cannot think of a group with more radical solidarity than Doomers. It also requires a reorientation on who climate change has hurt most and how to best fix those inequities, says Dr. Gill. After all, she says, the people ecofascists tend to blame for environmental problems. Immigrants, residents of developing countries, and people of color have done the least to create climate change and are already suffering most from its impacts and I don't have time to get into another planet nibbling versus planet eating. Okay, 
there is a big difference between climate, uh, between carbon footprint and ecological footprint, and uh, climate is one of the nine planetary boundaries. If climate change was nowhere in the picture, there are eight other ways we're taking down this planet. And uh, we'll just have to do the sub-Saharan uh, racist eugenicist uh, pointing out that uh, with no help from Honky, no help from Honky, the planet nibblers in sub-Saharan Africa will, will take out every single one of their fellow Earthlings they share Africa with uh, in the next 30 years. No help from the rest of the world. Climate change has nothing to do with it. All right. But we're going to wrap up with this quote from Dr. Gill. The biggest uncertainty about our climate future is not what the planet is going to do, but what we are going to do. This is true from the scientific perspective in terms of emission pathways, policies, and decisions, but it's also true in terms of rising social movements and other things that are hard to predict. Blah, 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 biggest pile of crap that I have read since uh, talking about how Costa Rica is the uh, poster child of sustainable development. But anyway, I think my uh, fossil-fueled washing machine is ready for me to take out my sheets and move into the dryer. So I might come out here for a little short uh, video while my sheets are drying in the electric dryer. Bye, guys.